Now these guys aren't actually attached to the bases just yet. Yeah, let's take him out of there. And we got the tree bark again. <clears throat> you can see we've got some of the cracked crackle paint right here. And then this is really fun stuff. Just like dried foliage here. You can get this at Michael's. It's really... <laughs> Blood smoothie definitely needs context. <laughs> here we go. Let's uh, put you in here. And so again, we've got our little Stark shield right there. Some more of that set. You can see we got some more crackle paint over here. And I'm just going to start to set these things out. And this is another really fun one here. We got a big old tree, piece of tree bark. Skull. Look at that. We put a little bit of our crackle paint here. So I'm going to take him off of this base here real quick. There we go. Now these haven't been magnetized yet. It's something that I typically do with my calve. Again, I remove him from the base real quick, like boom. So we can get to this. And again, look at that nifty crackle texture right there. So I've got another somewhere. Aha! Here we go. So this is the same same theory right here. That's the the tree bark basing. But I actually used even smaller little twigs here. So we've got some of our, and these are magnetized. So some of your Night's Watch caps. So maybe we also hit these with the oils as well. <laughs> My neighbors hear this out the window. <laughs> so again, we've got uh, more of the, the logs here. We certainly are going to do a lot of the snow effects on these guys. Now we've got another... I'm going to show you another couple of units here. So these, actually, you can see me painting these two guys. This is another YouTube channel video. So these were painted in oils. So some of the Thin Warriors right here. Again, you've got your blood effects, your your blood slushy right there. And you can see that, look at the, the colors in there. you got the turquoises and other colors, too. But these are the same texture sheets. See the piles of skulls there? Because what's better on thin warriors and piles of skulls? And then this is another kind of a typical Lannister unit. You've got the Green Stuff World texture roller, right, with the lion theme. With the lion theme on it. We've got our weathering powders. we got some of the cut leaves. A little skull here and there. So it can really give each army its own unique theme. Right, let's get this thin thin warrior out of the way. I'm going to pull him off of this base as well. And what we're going to try and do is we'll use some of our acrylics here real quick and just hit the bases with the acrylics so then I can glue the guys on and then we can maybe proceed with the oils. So let's get this in place where we want it to be. Whoops, that's not the right one. You go over there. And I do believe that you go here. And you go over here. Yep, that's how that works. I'm going to move these guys, keep them in the position they're supposed to be. How it comes back out again. Let's make sure that's actually where you can see it in the palette window over there. I do want to make sure I preserve all of the all that fun texture. Really want to make sure I preserve that. So I'm going to get these cards out of the way. We don't need those sitting over here either. I set the bases off to the side. And now we're going to bring out those liner paints again. Now you can really get the chance to see some of the nice cracks that are in there around Mr. Stark Shield. If you want to know why I've got extra Stark Shields and swords, <clears throat> it was a conversion made to some of them hit spears. And then some of them were also turned into a weapons crew. Because, well, they basically look historical anyways. Yeah, let's get a little blue liner out here. 
There we go. It's, again, the sticking with the Reaper clears right now. Where's my sepia? There's my sepia liner right there. Throw some more of this out here. Oh, what do we got? Where's my brown liner? Oh, what the heck? Let's throw out some green liner. Well, let's here. Let's not even use the brown liner. Let's use red and green. We'll use red green. We'll use red green. We're also gonna use Mr. Big Brush. At least, hopefully, so. And unless it's got too much dried paint in them, and we're also got. A little spray bottle like so so yeah I think that that number 12 has a bunch of dried ish paint in it yeah let's see if we can get that out of there got another Hello, little hobbit. spark my ganja oh uh, sky king asks why not use weathering powders on these bases why not let's let's play do I have I have rubbing alcohol here so that is a capital idea because it'll also dry pretty darn fast so let's do that let's pull out some let's paint with powders so thank you very much for the idea Sky King throw out a couple of these guys oh, let's get some of that out there darker aha here we go. A couple of darker colors. Come on out of there. So we got some darker powders. We've got some lighter powders. And now we're going to... Let, let's do some partying right here. I'm going to grab me another one of my little containers here again. Except this time it's going to be more of a clear container like that. I'm going to make this maybe a little bit flatter here. Here, I'm going to take some of that off. Rubbing alcohol. And this is very rare right now. <laughs> so, yeah, if you don't have rubbing alcohol, actually it might be easier just to get, and it's going to take me a while to grab it because I wasn't really ready to use that. Let me see. Aha, here we go. We also have liquid pigment fixer. I also, if I have a few of these, yes, I do. I'm going to throw some of these out here, and I'm going to throw the pigment fixer into one. All right, like so. I also have some pipettes over here. Pipettes. Sponges. Ah, oh, this is going to be fun. That is really going to be fun. I'm I'm looking forward to this right here. I'm going to fill another little basin here with some rubbing alcohol. Like so. This should be fun. Like so. And it's another way to clean that brush. A bit of a paper towel here. Give me a second. All right. So now our number 12 is mostly ready for action here. I'm going to get a little more rubbing alcohol into that. Look at how wide that number 12 craft brush can be. So let's let's start to play here with some powders. I'm going to throw some, some of my soot black out here. Boom. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the weathering powder is if they get on something, they're kind of there forever. So, i.e. your clothes, your carpet, anything like that, 
they're just going to stay there forever. So that's another calculation you make with weathering powders. Here, the carpet has long since been tainted and destroyed by paints and everything else. So no need to worry about that. And you can see I'm throwing out a little variety of colors here. Let's get my rubbing alcohol out of the way. I do want to know where my pigment fixer is, though. And you notice that is a liquid pigment fixer. Oh, good. That is, you can see that without too much of a sparkling effect. That's good. Uh, this is some dark earth right here. Like so. And I want to get some of this lighter yellow earth color in there too. So this is very fun. I actually have a video where I just painted an entire miniature just with weathering powders. All right, there's some of your... So we, we got a whole palette there full of different weathering colors. It's all Kathy's back in the house. Uh, how, how do we learn if we have fun with our, don't have fun with our tools? Yes, indeed. So we're going to have fun with this. Now, the idea is here, we liquefy. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my gun. So we get a follow from Rathmore TV. Thank you for the follow. So watch what happens here. As we, I'm going to use my pipette for this too here, actually. So look what's happening. That powder turns into a liquid. It's alchemy. Look at that. Oh, and guess what? In not too many minutes, it's going to turn back into a powder again. <clears throat> now here's the difference between... Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you. Make them for the follow. This, well, pigment fixer. This is liquid. It's going to liquefy the stuff. But this is going to keep it permanent, or as the rubbing alcohol means, I can shift it around, I can move it, do all kinds of fun stuff. So, and also too, this is something to think about. You say, "Man, that looks really, really dark." For now, it does. It will not stay this dark when it dries. It becomes lighter, which is one of those things that you're just going to have to experiment with and go, "Oh yeah, I forgot." It gets lighter. So that's, and there are ways to lighten this up. I've got other lighter colors. So let's just paint with powders. This is really not what I thought I was going to be doing here, but it is ideal because that's more like it. Now you can see that tray. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Very excited about this. So again, thank you very much for the suggestion. You got to. You, you must spark his ganja. If, if you want to be in the room here, you have to spark Gandalf's ganja first. Uh, let's see. Have you ever used resin with pigments? I've used the some basically some pigments with the water effect stuff, actually to make mud. Oh, we could do that too. We could actually make some mud. Remember we were talking about this, making the mud? So we could do that too. We can do some of that too, but you can see we're kind of, look at how that's already getting lighter. Look at that. It doesn't take long. Oh, well, that, hey, that, again, thanks for suggesting this. Now, you can also do this too. I can apply it dry and then, you know, do something like this. Take the pipette, and, or I can just pipette this directly like that and then do this because this is going to be a different result than what I do. See, look at that. Because you still actually, look at how that's starting to coagulate a little bit. And we're just going to paint around some of that. And we can mix these two. This is, this is just like paint. Look at this. We're going to mix colors together. Doesn't this look like we're actually just painting? We are, but those are weathering powders. Those are weathering powders. Look at how much lighter that gets. 
does not take very long. And look at look at how that just seeps down in there. Check that out. Very fun. Now it's it'll take some getting used to. It's really going to take some getting used to. Now that vehicle that I was telling you about earlier, this is kind of how it was painted. Look at this. I'm sneaking in some red now. Some of that rust color. Same thing over here. <clears throat> Let's get some variety to this. Here's a little more. Get, look at that, how it seeps in there. Look at that. Look at how bright it's getting. As that dries, it really lightens up. And don't forget, we can also again shade this a whole lot darker. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, too, is that if I use the pigment fixer, I won't be able to wipe this stuff away. So it's always something I've got to keep in the back of my mind. Is Am I using pigment fixer? Or am I using... So I look at this. I've got a big old clump of it here. So it's almost going to texturize that a bit. It's not just adding color. It's adding more texture. And I'm just I'm saving the the black for kind of the appropriate time here again using the rubbing alcohol that's some more of your rusty red earth right there Again, using the rubbing alcohol because it's thinner than water kind of like oils are as well bingo look at that and you can see how it when it dries it dries so much lighter and yes, that's the same Badger Steino Res Primer underneath there. I am not worried about the primer at all because I've done this many times before. And the primer, it, it's primer. If it can hold up to a little bit of rubbing alcohol, then it's garbage. Anyone that tells me you have to protect my primer from oil paint or whatever, I say, hey, you might want to be considering a new type of primer there because whatever you got ain't so nifty. If you had to protect your primer, that's kind of what the primer does. Uh, let's see, Rathmore asks, what's the point of the the texture with the color? It's one of the unique things, the property of weathering powders that paint just cannot do. It, it gives you that extra bit of dusty texture. This is supposed to be a wasteland, right? Kind of a desert sort of thing. You can't get any finer dust particles in this, but you can also... Especially if I add some of that realistic water in there. It just gives you an extra... It, it's a really slight layer of tech. It's barely noticeable by comparison, at least. At least by comparison, hardly noticeable. But see how that seeps down in there? And again, if I hit it with the pigment fixer first... Hit it with the pigment fixer first, we get... A more permanent result. Now here's where, look at this, we're going to kind of blend these two colors together a little bit. And you can see now how our cracked earth starts to really come out. And then like I said, we are going to do some black, or the soot black into it. All right here, let's, uh, let's get out the ancient earth because this has a little greenishness to it. It's going to go up here. I hope you guys can see that. Is that on? Yeah, that's on screen. And that is going to go. Let me do my, where's my pipe at here? I'm just going to have me a little bit of alcohol in here. That's the other sweet thing about the rubbing alcohol is that it dries so fast. Now look at how dark this starts out. That's going to be actually lighter. Than, than this color over here, but it starts really, really dark. You just have to factor that in, and it, it can be tough. Look at how much it darkens down. It, more than any other one, this one can be the most deceptive. Oh, Nessie Nose was told that if I wanted better effect to use oil primer, and I scoffed, Jim doesn't use oil primer. Better use oil primer? What the heck is that? 
that is just again I guess it's because knowing somebody who makes primer for so many years aka Badger and using their stuff and having used it on everything from again rubbing alcohol to oils to acrylics and everything else in between on terrain spraying it on tree branches and God knows what else plastic metal resin and never having a single issue whatsoever when I hear these folks, it's just like, what are they trying to sell? It's like, what what the heck are they trying to sell with this? So, what? Why? Why are they saying that all of this other stuff? You got to have this one special thing. I'm always suspicious of the. Oh, you must have this one special thing. Now, in the case of the the secret weapon crushed glass, well, it does a unique thing. Nothing else does what that does. But that's a specifically designed product for that. Now, now we're going to do something like, I need an open space on my palette. And I'm going to move my pigment fixer over there. I'm going to do something like this. Boom. This is where we mix. So we're going to take our, oh, look at this. We're going to maybe make a gray out of this. We're taking some of that lighter color. Mix it with our black. It doesn't look any lighter. But you got to remember what you just mixed in there. We just mixed in some of this lighter stuff. The liquid just makes it darker. Here, let's, speaking of liquid, let's liquefy that a little more. Have it flow. Boom. Ah, this is alchemy. This is true alchemy here, and I loves it. I love me some alchemy. Love me some alchemy. Even a little more of the... Look at this. See how that spreads by itself? You thought... Was it contrast paints have the so-called capillary action? Oils, when thin, have it. And so does rubbing alcohol. Look at that. Look at how that's just going to seep into here. See, look at how it, see how it expands all by itself. Check that out. Do that contrast paint and not leave a watermark. I dare you. I dare you to do what this just done. Look at this. Yeah. It's a bit like watercolors. It's a bit like oils. It's a bit like a bunch of different things, but what we know it is, is fun. This is so much fun. Look at this. I just touch it there. It seeps into all those yummy little cracks. I mean, why the heck else did we use the cracked earth stuff? Now we're going to try and get some more. Shading on our rocks over here, too. Let's do that. Yeah. Oh, and now here's the thing. Because people are saying, so okay, why the rubbing alcohol? Why the rubbing alcohol? A, it's thinner, right? Remember our sponges over here? What would just happen? That was the pigment fixer. Unless you did that immediately, you wouldn't be able to mop that stuff up. Oh, and by the way, any of this right here, if I hit it with the rubbing alcohol and then this, that's all going to be, I can wipe all that stuff up. So that is the other nifty cool thing. That's another highly technical term, nifty cool. Look at that. What just happened on that Stark Shield? Look at that. Just touch it there a couple of times. And it does its very own shading by itself look at that look at how we've got the the reddishness here oh, it's still a little more it's very watercolory styled but see how that's blending into this so we throw out some of our rust red oh what the heck let's grab a different brush and, and let's just keep throwing some more of this on let's have a let's have a weathering powder Parte. So this is our lighter stuff here. 
And those are going to mix together. I know it's dark right now. It's always darkest before it dries. Now back to my, get my darker tone here. Bam, for some sheeting. Uh, let's see, can the red weathering powder give a blood effect? Uh, it wouldn't be red enough, and it wouldn't be transparent enough. It, it's basically, that's the interesting, that's one of the different textures that a weathering powder gives you, is that it's sort of the anti-translucent. It, and with blood effects, that's your after translucency because of the whole plasma thing. And that that's kind of where blood effects can go haywire is that they're just, well, they're red paint and not much of anything else. And I can also paint over this too. Let, let's say I'm thinking I want to have more, you know, a different lighter cut or that shield there. I could still paint over the top of this, especially if it gets sealed. So we can, it's... We're not done with this as far as what we can still do with it, just because we have put powders on here first. Just because we got powder doesn't mean we can't get paint. I'm going to take some of this over here. So much fun. It just look at that. So little effort. Remember, maximize results, not the effort. And this is this is definitely maximizing our results here, for sure. And really minimizing the effort. We're also well, we're also stoking up on some fun too, which is never a bad thing. Never a bad thing. Look at this. So you can see how that dries lighter, and then look at that. We're just going to hit it with a couple of. Spots of our rubbing alcohol. Let's get some red in here. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget our reds. Remember, we still got bases that we can do here. We have only just begun to have some fun here. Look at that. I can throw a bit of my rusty red on here as a kind of opening round towards some maybe some weathering on the shield there too. And yes, I'm using the secret weapon weathering powders, but I've got the the make ammo stuff that'll work. There's a whole lot of weathering powders that'll work with this. It's just I happen to have the secret weapon. Oh, Megan Kane, this is one of the most magical spells. It is. It's alchemy, baby. It's what Pelia Spellbrush. He's doing his magic on there. Now yeah, let's see. Uh. At least we know, yeah, just, it was, well, I thought I had, somehow I thought I think they were being made tomorrow or something like that. So, well, and also just doing this, getting ready for this, I kind of forgot to clear out the the space where the cookies normally go to cool. So there was nowhere for the cookies to go to cool down. So that was, yeah, we'll, we'll rectify that. But look, we're already... Look at all the different colors we've got going on in here. Check that out. Now we're going to go, remember that, that's that gray again. We're taking some of the red. We're going to mix it with this powder. We're going to get a different color up here. You just have to realize it's going to start out dark like that, but then it's going to get lighter. It will get lighter. I'm going to also... I'm going to get a little fresh vat of the rubbing alcohol here, too. These little soda containers like this, or the soda lids, are very handy for such things. As long as I haven't used up all of my new ones. So we're just going to pour out some fresh rubbing alcohol. I'll go over there. All right. Where's my pipette? Got a fresh pipette too. Continue with the darker. Now let's uh, 
I'll grab me yet another brush. And now that I've got this cleaner, go even lighter here. So it's almost think of it more like a highlight version here. I'm even you know, I'm gonna even throw some of the pigment fixer in there. And that's gonna go here. Now you just you have to be prepared for it to be I guess it's going to start darker like this, and then you're just going to have to, in in the back of your mind, realize that yes, yes, it has to, it has to dry, and that will make a big difference. Now we've got some of the, that's the red, some of the black. Throw some of that in here. I'm also going to. I'm going to throw a little bit of that out here, sort of prep that surface a bit. And then we're going to drop in a little touch of it there. We've got this over here that I also want to have some color in. So bam, look at that. So again here, the same thing. We could even use a smaller brush for that. Let me see if I can use one of these guys for such things. Yeah, yeah, here we go. An even smaller brush does it even more delicately. Look at that. Again, putting cracks into our soil right there. And all the while, look, we can do something like this. I'm going to soak the and rubbing alcohol. See how it's removing what's there? It's literally taking away that color. We're actually getting back down to primer here. Yeah, we honor your sacrifice. It is, uh, this is just so much, look at this. It's sort of, remember how we were removing the paint on Jamie and those other ones? Look at that. See, we can take some of that away. Let's use a little more rubbing alcohol here. I think this, I was probably going to do this as a, like a tutorial video. Because I wasn't quite sure if people would be just freaked out seeing just a bunch of bases being painted or not. I was kind of hoping they wouldn't. But now we need some context here, right? Because we got this light color here and all this dark stuff around it. So what I'm going to do, while I'm still thinking about it here, where's my brown liner somewhere? Nope, that's red liner. Here's the brown liner. So I'm going to take this, just shove it right over here. Boom. Because we want to see, well, what is, what does dark really look like? Just like on the figures, we needed the context, right? Well, we're going to do that right here. Poof. Like you do. And this is not going to be the necessarily the final color here, but I did need some kind of a reference here. So look at the difference that makes all of a sudden. Now we're starting to get some real desert colors. Oh, Kev Thulu, let's see, isn't all the gear for model painting really expensive? Do you ever worry about investing too much in their one piece? Um, there are people that spend way, way too much money on their miniature stuff, or at least on things that aren't quite so important. The vast majority of my brushes, well, right here, 90 plus percent of what I do is done with 12 brushes, five bucks you can see I use a minimal number of paint colors that's additional savings right there so Kathy and I we haven't had 400 jars of paint in this house in 20 years combined if you include all the jet jars of paint you still couldn't find that many so people buy way too many colors that they don't need because well just like anything else 
paint companies don't survive by telling you, look, don't buy any more of our paint. You have all that you need. Why do you need any more? Stop buying our paint. They are basically, they stay in business by you going, oh my gosh, i got to have that next color of red. But wait, don't you have 40 jars of red? And they said, but no, I need that one. I need that one red. Now, of course, nobody has red-green. That that only happens here in Wapleville. That is the only place you can get red-green is in Wapleville. Yeah. Is it the difference this starts to make already? There, it, yeah, you can't find it anywhere else, baby. It's nowhere else. And we'll make it in acrylic and oils. I'm going to make... I'm going to take an old reaper jar or something like that. I'm going to empty that sucker out. Well, if it's not already empty. And I'm going to put red-green in there. And I'm going to use that in every stinking video. Boom. Look at, look, at the, look at the difference that makes. So all of a sudden, my desert colors, oh, guess what? They start to look a whole lot lighter. A whole lot lighter. Now, we're going to go back into... I almost... Almost stuck my brush. Oh, look at it. See how it's drying on the palette there? Which is kind of cool, actually. See, look at this. I can, I can paint just as fine with a little brush here and my weathering powders. Again, we're just going to... We're literally painting with rubbing alcohol. Heck, right now, you'd probably have a harder time getting rubbing alcohol than you would getting Reaper paints. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty much convinced that would be the case. All right, the magical disappearing pipettes. But we've got more. Oh, look, we got these little tiny ones. Look at that baby pipettes. That's fun. Tiny baby pipettes. For a little bit of our desert color here. Yet gotta be willing to let that go a little bit darker. Oh, and the best part about it is that this palette right here, it, like 10 days from now, with no cover, it's the ultimate wet palette. <laughs> it is the ultimate wet palette because it's, even though it's always dry, it can be made wet very easily. Look at this, we're just kind of reactivating the color that we had here. Let's get some dark over the top of this now. Let's just do that. Well, now we're going to get something that's almost like a bit of a green here. Look, it's it's kind of like we're painting. Oh, let's see. Oh, I just got, let's see, different wizard, different spell. Mike Disney is magic, yep. I have one red, I have four. Kathleen, you have two of the most enchanting, magical, and loving people you would ever want to meet. That's what he lets you believe. Ah, you believe it until it's too late and you have met your doom at the gates of Wapleville. Oh, thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Oh, let's. I'm gonna get some more of that red in there. Okay. I have. Don't want to be remiss. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much for the follow. It's the Lost Wastelander. I have my I have my little camera controls in the way there for a second. Now, where is my lighter color here? And by lighter, I mean my very light color over here. Oh, and guess what? I have a lighter sandy color that I can throw in here too. I actually have a lighter sandy color. See how that gets, it's not just getting lighter, but see how it literally looks like powder. I mean, it just quite literally looks like powder. Oh, look, and it's perfect for painting our little kind of grassy, twiggy tufts there, too. There. And again, as this dries, it's going to just get lighter. It will get lighter as it dries. There, look at I have these nice nifty 
dark so that we can just pop. Look at that. That's how it goes right into those cracks and crevices there. Here, let's make sure our skull has some darks around it as well. So what we're going to put this right here. We got ourselves a sponge. And we just wipe that away. We've got our small brush over here. We'll just prep the surface with a little bit of our powder and then we add a little bit of our red right. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. A couple different ways here. Let's again we prep it with the pipe at and then we'll throw a little bit of our paint over the top of it here. Harmons, spark my ganja. Andreas, thank you so much for the follow. It is appreciated. We're just having some fun. I know this is kind of an unusual thing. You're probably not used to saying. We are painting with powders. Yes, we are. Because, well, we can do this kind of thing. We can do this. I need some more darks over here. Where's Mr. Pipette? With a little bit of the powder inside. We can push this around a little bit, and then here's some of our dark or some of our red, and that's just some of the powder that's sitting on top. Although, again, if you want that powder to stay there, that's where we do something like this. Okay. See how that got a kind of a chunky pile there on the end of the brush. And that'll be a nice little batch of reddish whatever. So now, again, where that pigment fixer goes, nothing can remove that. So just it's a you just need to know what you put where. Because you go to remove something, you go, oh man, I used the pigment fixer there. Ain't going anywhere. Gonna... That's prepping the surface with a little bit of pigment fixer now. And then we're going to work some dark in here. Over here, let's see if we can't make that a little lighter. I'm going to see if I can find some lighter... Aha! Uh -huh. Hmm, how's about a wee spot of burning sands? I'm going to put this over here and we shall find a... Wow, it's a good thing I got dozens and dozens of these craft brushes. Maybe I have dozens and dozens because they only cost a few pennies each. Look at how light that is. You thought our other yellow color was light. Mm -hmm. All right, well, where's my touch of rubbing alcohol here? Now we're going to make this a little bit lighter. I'm going to make that flow a little more. This is why I always try to have the, cl the cleaner, unsullied rubbing alcohol around. And this is basically going to blend here a little bit. And when this dries, we should get a lighter color. So we're basically now, we've shaded with the weathering powder. Let's see if we can't highlight with the weathering powders too. It's just, it's going to be this weird thing of, oh my gosh, it looks so dark. You're not highlighting it, you're darkening it. Well, sort of, kind of. You know, I might even use a touch of the pigment fixer here. Look at that. Look how much lighter that got. Uh-huh. In a hurry, right? It did not take long at all. Let's see if we can't find a few other places for that. Again, we've got our darker color here. Let's just dust this over the top and then as it dries, as that dries, it should get lighter over the top. 
and the darks underneath should remain behind. That's the theory, anyway. It seems to be following according to theory, right, over there. Here's some more. And this is why I say you can paint with this stuff. That's why you can always find fun new things to play with. Oh, let's get some of this mixed together, something halfway in between. So we're, we're mixing this to... Who enters my domain? Oh, thanks, Keffa. Actually, be sure to give Keffa a follow there. Always does some very fun things. Thank you for the raid. Ah, boy, they're, they have no idea what they're getting into, are they? They have no idea what... They've entered the domain of weathering powders. So this ought to be sh fun. Oh, uh, Ancient 80, Isaiah works, and you're so funny. Uh, oh, Paul Drake on a, is on a Svengoolie movie. I've never seen him on anything else besides Perry Mason. Oh, look at, Hello, look at this. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Well, thank you for the follow. You're so funny. It's appreciated. We are literally painting with weathering powders right here. So all of this stuff is various colors of weathering powders. We are using things like rubbing alcohol and pigment fixer to liquefy them, right? And we've been painting here. So we, we were darkening this down. Now we're starting to actually get some of our highlights in. And as I've mentioned several times here, that looks darker. When it dries, it's going to dry lighter like this. You can mix pigment powders together just like they are paints. You can paint with them just like they're paints. Look at this. So we've got kind of this blasted earth. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much for the follow the real doom song. Thank you so much. And look at our cracked earth that really starts to show up. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Oh, and thank you for the follow, Jive Pool. It's appreciated. So get more of our weathering powders, and we can go dark over the light, too. But remember, all this stuff is going to turn lighter. And what do we start with? This is what the this originally looked like, just primer. And all of this has happened with our nifty, again, weathering powders rubbing alcohol here so it's just the 70 percent that's in those little jars that you see over here and you can see how we've look at how dry this is it dries really fast that is the interesting aspect of weathering powders is that it dries so much faster ironically enough the oils that i want to use on the horses well those are going to take much longer to dry that's kind of the opposite effect but you can see this, the weathering powders just kind of give it this dusty look. Gives it a nice, dusty look. And we can paint some of the darker color over the top here now. There we go. There, look at that. We've used maybe oh, six or seven different colors. This is the lightest of the weathering powders color-wise that we've used. I think it's called Burning Sands. But see how dark that is? It's actually going to be darn near as light as the color that's already there. That can be the confusing thing about the weathering powders. I know it it always kind of gets me every time I work with these. And I keep forgetting that it's going to dry lighter, just like that. But the capillary action of the weathering powders, it's really hard to match those. It's really hard to match that. And here we're gonna look at all of the nifty little blending we've got going here with the reds. You can start to really see the cracked earth as more of that lighter lighter tone starts to take over. Yeah, we've got bases to paint, so you'll get to see this also 
the, the process start again. It will begin again with our bases too. All right, now what we're going to do, let's orientate this the correct way and let's get these bases where they belong. I think this one goes here. I know this one goes back here. And this guy goes over here. And those are for our Targaryen cavalry. So we'll be painting these later on. Ah, so Kefa worked on the uh, some assembling of Sigmar figs for Monday's stream and worked oh on the Clockwork Dragon. Oh, Rathmore asks, other than using the alcohol to paint the powders on, uh, let's see, what the, uh, I mostly use it for the weathering powders. Uh, you don't want to mix rubbing alcohol with regular paint because weird things happen. Paint does not like rubbing alcohol whatsoever. Uh, I'm just going to look and make sure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, let's do... Let us go back to kind of where the party started here with some of these other... Where's my little pipettes? So we're going to activate that. Look at this. Look how that turns into a liquid. The advantage of the rubbing alcohol is that it's not permanent. I could wipe this off of the thing with just some more rub rubbing alcohol. That's all I would need. But here, let's just get some. Get that liquefied there. And then we're going to just start to paint. But you can see how it kind of seeps into all of the crevices there. Now, unfortunately, these are not magnetized, so there is definitely going to be some sliding around of the miniatures here. Now, this is our lighter sandy color here. Yeah, let's get a little more of our rubbing alcohol into that. Because we want to continue this sand, right? We want to match that as best as we can. And you say, well, that's really not much different of a color right there. Well, it's definitely going to be. It's definitely going to be different. As this, this starts to dry, boy, is it going to really lighten. I also don't want to forget the my reds over here. We've just had a few main colors that we've really kind of focused on here for our, for our bases. We also have that, that cracked earth, right? I'm going to get a little more rubbing alcohol into my containers here because I'm just about out. There we go. And just a simple 70%. It's the household variety. It's not the super, super duper variety at all. All right, there's some of our red. And then we've got this soot black over here. Remember... We're not, not so much painting with the soot black, we're just touching it. And we're going to let the cap, natural capillary action do its thing. So we're just, look at how it kind of seeps into all those cracks and crevices. We can even kind of do this in advance with a little bit of pipette work there. And then you just paint your weathering powder over the top of it and then we can go lighter over the top of this as well and you can still paint over it don't don't forget you can definitely paint over the top of this now you can spray fix this as well and since this is not like a vehicle I want to have specific dust effects look at look at how this is starting to lighten over here you'll see all of that stuff begin to lighten and it's just it's so wild the way it does that all right what we're going to do is similar thing here with some just going to throw a bunch of our rubbing alcohol out here and i hit this shield and let it do its thing that that can be sometimes the most difficult thing for people to do 
Oh, let's see, does the percentage matter? I have the 90% stuff for cleaning 3D printer. Actually, I, we just got our 90% for the 3D printer the other day. That's uh, That would be just too intense for this. It's sort of like the reason why I use the mineral slash white spirits instead of, well, for several reasons not to use the nasty paint center that you would get at a dime store or something. Uh, you definitely want the 70%. It's going to be gentler on the pigments, and that, that would be better for you. That would be better for the pigments than the, than the 90%. Now, I'm going to get some more of the... Where's my burning sands color here? Where did that go? There's your ancient earth. Burning sands. Let's get some more of this out here. So we can do some lighter, lighter effects again. And maybe even while that is still wet, I'm going to grab a little bit of my alcohol. Let's get this liquefied. Let's see, I've used water with weathering pigment. I have done, actually, that's what I've used in a pinch to make mud effects. Now, this thing I remember is going to lighten up like crazy over here. This is, it looks darker. It's going to get lighter. And also keep in mind that none of this is permanent. I have not used pigment fixture. This this is just the rubbing alcohol. And all of this is going to get so much lighter. And the idea is it's going to start to match our previous color there. At least that's the general idea. Yeah, we'll just dust this over the top. Now we've got a... Oh, good. I still got some of the ancient earth, which has that kind of greenish look to it, aside from being lighter. And it's so... it just Of all the colors, it's the lightest color, and when you apply it, it looks the darkest. It's just... It's weird. It is so freaky. Uh, let's see. You can drink the vodka when you're done. Now let's see. Are the powders, are they always intended to be painted on? No. Some people just brush them on as dust. Well, like this. Some people just brush them on very dusty like that. And then they... But then you have to have some kind of sealer. you got to do something to seal those things. And that involves a liquid of some kind. My whole idea here is that I really wanted to be able to paint with these and, and the kind of that classic sense of painting because I wanted them to do their capillary thing. Like how it got down into all of those cracks and crevices there. That basically only happens if you let the powders do their thing. Now again, you can go over the top. Yeah, look at this. So that is a darker material. Look, I can paint right over the top of that. Just like it's regular paint. It just someone asked if this could be done. Let's see, this movie is so bad, but you will love the aircraft carrier footage. It must be the forest stall or something, because I'm assuming it's in the well, it has to be in the nineteen sixties. If if Paul Drake is in there. So that must be the forest all the carrier footage, I'm assuming. Okay. I'm going to get some of my lighter stuff here. Again, I'm going to activate it with a little bit of the rubbing alcohol. And it just it looks like nothing. It looks like nothing's happening there, but there is actually there is more pigment going on to the surface there. And it's actually lighter even though it looks darker. Now here, if we take some of our rubbing alcohol, can't look at that, it just kind of reactivates that. I can mix some more colors into it. It's just, it's kind of forgiving because quite literally, nothing is set in stone until you set it in stone and that's to seal it. The deadly mantis. <laughs> uh, now the uh this is the funny thing is oh gosh, what was it? The Curious Creations of Christine McConnell 
as we were watching that in one of the episodes she takes food coloring dried food coloring and mixes it with the vodka and then paints with it like I'm doing here now that actually sounds way more appetizing than this that's for sure way more appetizing yeah let's darken some of these things down and again I can paint over this too with my regular paints but let's see let's get some more let's get some colors onto these guys here so where's the where's our magical little pipettes here just get some rubbing alcohol onto this boom like you do and now I'm just gonna start to splash around some weathering powders Just move these things around. Just have fun. I mean, if it ain't fun, it ain't worth it. And this is certainly one way to have some nice fun. Here, I'm going to go over the tops of some of these again. And this is my darker color here. It starts to set some of that down. Could I have done this with regular paint? Yes, I could have. Uh, let's see. Model Railroad Magazine did an article to paint locos with stovepipe polish. <laughs> uh, let's see. Paul Drake did a lot of B movies. Ah. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming if it's happening, must be happening like in Tokyo or something like that, and you have the usual screaming victims. They're just kind of standing there watching it instead of actually running away. Let's go with some more of our reds in here. Let's get some of this soot down into the crevices here again. Because remember, we can we can lighten this, we can darken this. We are going to darken this over here. Can't with some of that nifty little capillary action. We can use a finer brush for that too. You just, like I said earlier, just remember, you get this stuff on your clothes or on your carpet. Congratulations. It's it's there for the, it's there for the duration. Always run in front of the monster. Not the, yes, why would you ever run sideways away from the monster? You either run directly towards it or not away from it. Got my, taking some of my alcohol here with some of the black. Again, that's a soot black. We'll mix it. We'll make a brown. Let's make a darker brown out of this. We're taking the, the brown, mixing it with the black, making something in between. Because why not? There we go. We'll let, let's see how that just kind of gets down into all of that cracked crackle paint stuff there what's happening over here I'm gonna take some of this it's already palette sludge the most wonderful color ever I think we just got one more here to get started in the process And we start out with, we can sort of, look at that. Well, that just seeps into all of those little crevices right there. And then as it dries, it dries lighter. Just have to remember that. I know I've said that a bazillion times, but we always have new people heading into the room here. Uh, which base? This base here. We have not hit this one yet. We got to get them all ready to go. And then we can stick some of our horsies on here. So just like we've done before, we're gonna dive into our some of our red over here. Some of our red. Some of our 
brown over here. And then we'll be able to get into some of our black. And let it all just sink down into here. Now for some of that black. I am going to use my pipe bet here though to activate some of that. Because that's really and that's really black. There's some more. Makes it thinner. Let that really get down in all the nooks and crannies here. Like you do. And like I said, this is uh, it's all just rubbing alcohol, so I could remove a whole bunch of this just with more rubbing alcohol. Which I don't think I'll be doing that. It's just, it's something, it's a possibility. It's a possibility that is always open. Until you use the pigment fixer, and then in which case that, that door kind of shuts closed. Oh, I've been watching the last drive with Joe Bob Briggs since this morning. There we go, some more of our dark over the top. Now again, I'm going to grab a different brush here. We'll get some of that earlier color out of that. There's our pipette action here. Some of this lighter color. It's going to be toned down a bit with some of that nearby but it looks darker, but we have to remember just how light this stuff is. It's going to be as light as that is when it dries. It, this literally looks like there's no difference between the two colors. However, when it dries, it will be quite different. And it won't take that long to dry. That's the other nifty thing about the rubbing alcohol, is that it'll dry pretty darn fast because it evaporates it's got such a fast evaporation point so let's get uh, now because the paint is also getting mixed together we're making some new some making some new colors here starting to take advantage of that bark texture just cause Oh, uh, let's see. Ah, uh, there's some... A little bit of the rubbing alcohol left over there. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see when this stuff all dries over here. Just how similar it's going to be to everything else that we painted before. Yeah, working with the weathering powders is... There's just a grit. It's got more grit to it than, say, a regular paint might. But we can go in and paint these items with regular paint, too. There's nothing to stop us from doing that. Most definitely not. See, how, look at how bright that's starting to get. Remember how dark that looked? It looked like this. It looked like that. But now it's getting lighter. Yeah, we've got this spread out nice and filbert-like. You just have to kind of anticipate how oh, this is all going to dry. Look at how light that got. And like I said, I can go over this with some other, with my acrylic paint as well. But now as those kind of dry off there. I also am going to take some more of the brown liner here. I'm going to hit the edges of the bases. Like this guy here. Now you can really see how light that sand got. 
And I'll just drop this puppy back in here. It's just important for the context. Just like when we're painting the miniatures. So for the new folks that haven't gotten to see this, now the early part of this stream, as we'll let some of this kind of dry here for a bit. And get you in there. Where's Jamie? Here he is. So this was what we, one of the things that we painted earlier. So there's your Jamie Lannister. We did some non-metallic gold. We did freehand. We did all of this stuff earlier. And I'll, I'll show you that. I'll show you that in a second. We're kind of, we got the camera backed way out. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun, just. As Gandalf welcomes garroted. I'm going to say garroted because it's more fun to think of it as garroted. And I'm, I'm going to imagine that maybe that is exactly how it's supposed to be pronounced, but feel free to tell me if it's not supposed to be garroted. So look at how that all of a sudden everything that was so dark ain't so dark anymore. These last couple of bases here. So I did want to let the lighter powders dry. I wonder is it just what what do I have with those? There's some more. Yeah, this is just brown liner. It's the same color that we used so much on our other figures there. So you can see the difference that that starts to make. We've got our last, our last base over here. And for those of you not familiar, this is part of the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. And this will be for a cavalry unit very similar to... Just give me a second here. I'm just going to put this back where it goes. Here we go. This is the same bark and branch, just we didn't use the crackle medium. But this is what we're after here. So these are the Night's Watch. Right now we are working on... Oh, it's Groot. Okay. Uh, da -da -da, that's a unique way of saying it. I just... Uh, I, I think because of the murder mystery that we watched the other day. That's why garroted is actually, because someone actually was garroted, I do believe, in that murder mystery. All right, we're going to get some of this lighter stuff again to use as a highlight. It means back to our rubbing alcohol to activate it, turn it into paint that we can use right over here. Now, while all this stuff, we we're talking about painting the, the shields and maybe that sword with regular paint. So well, let's see if we can clear out a space for the regular palette again. It'll be back. Never fear. We'll be back with our weathering stuff. But we've got, boom, our regular palette here with a whole bunch of stuff in its way. So let's move some of this stuff out of the way. There we go. And now it sort of fits. Okay. Let's do a little bit of starkiness here. If we can. Now remember, none of this is sealed. So the powders are still active. So as there's kind of a proportion to how much liquid I put in here. To how much it's going to reactivate the weathering powders. And you can see we're also kind of leaving enough of the rusty stuff behind. We're just trying to give it an impression of that whole Stark Shield thing here. And I'm kind of hoping that the weathering powders actually do mix with that paint just a touch. That's what I'm hoping for. And it seems to be doing just that. Now the sword blade here. Let's... I'm going to go maybe with a dark... Yeah, yeah, we'll go darker blue. And then we'll just have some of the 
lighter blue here. Now, do I have... I do believe that's blue liner. Yep, that is blue liner. So, this should be fun. Alright, on our shield here. Boom. But look at that. See how that weathering powder kind of stays behind. And there we go. Now, Nessie wanted to see some Starks. Well, you get to see some Starks. I didn't. I did. I not promise you would see some Starks. You didn't think they would be dead Starks, did ya? You didn't think they were all going to be dead. Now I'm going to get different type of blue here for the edge. of this shield and I will go back over this with some of the rust color too to give it a little bit of oxidization little touch of shading here sword blade here will get a little more of our lighter tones and that we don't want to make it too glinty that's another highly technical paint term there glinty yeah I just want to get some separation there with that with the soil there we can get push it around move that around Let's get the other side of this. Give it a little bit of a darker edge here, like you do. Bang. Let's get some of our metal colors into this again. And that is the faded ultramarine. Using that to get myself a bit of, uh, here we go, some lighter colors there. Now we're, we're turning over towards a, it's a little bit more Hello, of a blue. Little hobbit, spark my ganja. And Gandalf says, Lex, welcome in. Welcome in. We've been using weathering powders on these, this set of bases and movement tray for a while. We're just briefly shifting over to some regular acrylic paints here basically working on the the stark shields here now remember these colors that look so light right now well they're not all that light they are nowhere near light but we don't necessarily want a super bright well, a lot of bright colors here on these shields that are going to be all worn and weathered and beat up because well you know like dead starks that sort of thing uh, let's see, Glinty Floof. There we go. Yeah, Dead Starks for Nessie. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just like with with Bethany, when she thinks, just when it, she thinks it's safe to come in here where there's going to be no object source lighting, and I'll just halfway through, I'll just be like, oh, yeah, you know, there was no object source lighting, but I kind of lied. I told you there weren't going to be Starks, and then there were. You wanted Starks. I gave you Starks. You said you wanted them, so I provided you with Starks. They're floor Starks. We'll just call it that. They're they're slightly used Hello, Starks. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Sugar fiend. Thank you for the follow. Which that's. Boy, that's making me hungry for cookies. Speaking of sugar, why, man? Well, hopefully tomorrow, that's going to be the first thing I do once I'm done with this, is getting anything out of the, off the kitchen table and out of the way so that those cookies can be made. Let's, let's zoom in here a touch because we've backed out. Where's my, there we go. There, now you can see it a little bit better. Let's do something like this. So yeah, we got some shading here. We still got our shading. And then as our color intensity comes back, just like everything else, look at that. 
Let me get my screen to be full size here. Floor Starks. That is good. That's gonna. That's a thing now. That has just be officially become a thing. Just like, I think it was two years ago at ReaperCon. Yeah, it was two years ago that Floor Lettuce became a thing. Let's see if we can get a couple of highlights on there. So all of a sudden, our bases have that just a mm, little splash of color on them. Just a hint of color. Which then, this will be... We're going to take this and we're going to get some of our rust in it too. We haven't forgotten that. Oh, can I get me an edge here? Can I have me an edge? Yes, I can. How's about here? And here. On our little stark doggy poo here. Get him just a little bit of texture on that. Why not? Because we're going to hit it with rust. We'll hit it with rust anyways. Let's make sure that that little doggo stands out. And you can see it that because we had the water and the pigment powders underneath it, they did mix together slightly. They definitely mix together just a bit. And I'm going to get some more separation from with the dog from the shield here. Oh, yeah, we'll add some more of our... Let's add a little bit of maggot white to that. Like you do. Even to the sword there. Now, what do I want to do here? I'm going to take some of our blue liner. There we go. I have it like some of the paint has worn away here. Still reveal some of that wood grain texture. Touch of that wood grain texture, but then kind of wipe out the rest. This little doggo here has got to do something. Maybe we'll actually put some darker. Where is his... What the heck? Okay, that's where his head is. All right, that's good to know. Now, time for some rusting effects. After, after this, though... Yeah... Little touch of the sandy color into this because if it's going to be sitting by all this sand, it's got to be affected in some way by that. That's ah, a little better. Yep, into the book, baby. Floor Starks. Oh, Hello, I'm... little hobbits. Spark my ganja. And thank you for the follow, Pixel Cruncher. So the ex these extra bits here. I had done some conversions now. I don't think they're on my Instagram page or not. I don't think they're there. But for all the Starks that I was doing as a commission, those, actually they're on the blog. They should be on the blog. I made some weapons crews. So basically took the archers and the, the spearmen and the swordsmen and we chopped off obviously the shields and the arms and we turned them into artillerymen. We even turned uh, some of them into spearmen. And these were the leftover bits. And they've obviously, they're real handy when you need dead guys. Really handy when you need those dead guys. Now let's, let's take, let's go back to our, oh, what the heck, let's go back to our weathering powders again. Where did you go? There you are. So here's our rust brown over here. I'm gonna get that somewhat centered. I just got a little of my rubbing alcohol. Here's some more. 
Now let's just uh, make ourselves a little bit of a rust. Let's make ourselves a bit, bit of rust here. Oh, let's go right here on our shield. No, I'm going to go a little bit more with just the rubbing alcohol. Really thin this down. And I've got three members it's going to dry a whole lot later. So say we all. So say we all. No, uh oh, Art of Mike Disney. Hey, wait a minute. We have, we have waffles subbing waffles. Look at that. Who would have expected that? Thank you very much, Mike Disney, and definitely give Art of Mike Disney a follow because you get 2D art, you get miniatures, you get Pictionary, you get all kinds of fun and good times when you follow Mike Disney, because we do. And now look, there's some rust. Oh, look at that. We got rust. Isn't rust grand? Especially when we just take a little more of our weathering powders here. I also wanted to get some of the sand into it. Kind of like maybe it's been there a little bit. Let's do a little bit more of our rusty type stuff. Look at that shield right there. See how that's drying so quickly? We certainly need some of that on our sword. Gotta get some of that here on our sword blade. The nice thing is, though, if I don't like it, if it's too much, I just take some rubbing alcohol and we wipe it away. But there we go. Look at that. Nice little shield right there. Uh, I just noticed that. Oh, yeah. It was the, uh, let's see. Uh, well, thanks again for all of the subs. So let's see. Uh-oh. I think we just got bits. Oh, we got tipped. Tip jar. Tip jar's got something in it. Here we go. Thank you very much, Armored Wolf. And that's what he does. Wapelia Spellblade. He needs his liquids. He's got to stay hydrated. And and bits and cheers and all that kind of stuff and donations help keep him hydrated. Quite literally, help keep him hydrated. And I'm hoping that the next time we do one of these, he gets hydrated with some Riesling. The, actually, the sweeter Riesling. That's what I'm going to go for. Usually we get the neutral variety so that it's more palatable for Kathy. It was rust. Now I'm over here. I'm starting to use it more as... Look at that. What is this shading material over here? I mean, this is just too much fun. Oh, and by the way... This whole base here didn't even exist as of about 3 o'clock this morning. So it's gone from basically nothing but a plastic tray and a collection of plastic circles to this. And not a whole lot of time. And boy, has it been fun. Oh, we've been, we have been remiss. So we added our rust there, but I'm going to go back, get my palette. We got to do some skulls here. Holy smokes. Now, I actually get to do the bleached skulls. The, the skulls that, speaking of, oh, and Armored Wolf, definitely check out the Armored Wolf Etsy page because if you want dice bags, there are no other dice bags except Armored Wolf dice bags. That is also written in the Book of Wapple. Those are the only dice bags that exist in Wappleville. No, none others are allowed. But we always have this discussion with these skulls that they can't be this kind of bleached bone that you see all the time with skulls because they're not in the desert. Usually it's in a, especially in a jungle type environment. This is the first time in forever that I've actually had skulls in a desert environment. So I actually get to paint them this light color. Now, what am I talking about? Let me see if I can't find some of my other skulls here or my other things that have jungly things with skulls. Somehow I cannot locate them. Or no, I have, nope, not on there. But anyways, let's say you got a jungle environment like this. If you have skulls sitting on this thing, you don't want it to be bleached white, you want it to be darn near black. 
Oh, uh, uh, Micah, we need to get Spellblade on the table soon. Well, basically, he's just... Well, he wields the craft brushes. He wields those plus one master crafted craft brushes. They are the most deadly implements in all of, well, whatever that universe happens to be. And he just he just spreads middle tones everywhere. That's he doesn't cast like a inspiration or something like that. He just does cast middle tones. And he doesn't cast dancing lights. He just can't. He just casts object source lighting. And he can also reduce the effectiveness of the enemy swords by reducing the reflectivity of their non-metallic metal. Yeah, you didn't think you were getting. <laughs> you didn't know what you were in for, did you? So there we go. Now we got our skulls sitting over there. Are they saturated middle? To well, yes, they are very. Well, but see, then it, it depends on what time of day it is. If you've got the unsaturated middle tones, well, then clearly it's a different time of day. So that's how we know what time of day it is. All right, let's, let's play with regular paint here now. Let's play with some regular paint. We've had our fun with the weathering powders. Let's see what we can do now with some regular paint. We're just basically using whatever happens to be sitting out on the palette here. We're still using the same brushes. I get most of this done with the weathering paints. Multimedia, that's that's what we were calling that this stuff. Cast saturation, cast OSL. That's that's the thing. That is, uh, someone's got to write that down. Nessie, you got to write that down for me so I don't forget about his, oh, that's what that's what the cheers and stuff have to be for. It, it's got to be like, he has to cast saturation somewhere or he has to cast object source lighting somewhere. Of course, Faded Ultramarine just casts itself because it's, it's a paint and a sorcerer. See, now we can take even more advantage of all that nifty texture that's already there. And it is starting to look at it, it's picking up some of the weathering powders too. But what this does is it's it let me pick up a, just that much extra of the texture. I'm gonna get to my some of that maiden flesh over there. Okay, I I also have to remember too. There's gonna be a big old horsey on each one of these bases, and guess what? You're not gonna see a whole bunch of this stuff. It's gonna kind of disappear. Well, not disappear completely, but it, it's not gonna be quite so easy to see all this stuff. We're gonna get some of our little viney tree root things. Oh, geez, there's a whole nother little skull over here. All right. Let's do that. Let's do that. It's got a little hole in it there, too. And I won't get too involved in these guys until it, now I get to start getting the miniatures on here and see what we have. All right, now that we've got this to a certain degree there, I'm just going to now, let's grab some miniatures here. Man, that's that's very fun right there. Let's see, I know this one's got to go here. And I'm going to grab myself my some gluing implements and other such things. There we go. At least I hope I have such things. It looks like I do. I'm going to get this out of the way. I can do this. 
then I realize it's not exactly going to be in focus being way down there. Now, this one's really going to have to, there we go, he's in place. Now, some of these have uh, two legs, which with pins in them, which makes that a little bit easier. I'm going to snip off some of the edges of these. As Kathy says, ow, my eye, because that's what she always does whenever I'm doing that. She'll have to type that in here. Push him down. All right, so there you go. See, he's kind of dancing over Floor Stark. Oh, they killed the mantis. Ah, there we go. Actually, that for a second, it looked like it said, Ow, owl, my eye. Here, actually, I'm going to drill that hole a little bit deeper. If I still have my pin vise, which I do. And matching your pin vise to the pins oh my gosh we learned the hard way how important that is early on all right that's gonna be there we go there we go because we don't want things to be floating too much Let the glue do its thing. Now we've got another one here again, two feet. I'm gonna glue on that base. Let's make sure that they go all the way down here first. And if it doesn't, I'm gonna drill them again just to make sure. Snip off some of the ends of those. And the same Badger primer that I used on the bases themselves. So look at this. We've got our nice little rearing cavalry here ready to go. He goes in that corner. And now, now we got this one over here. Get rid of the ends of our pins. And make sure we've got the, Now this shouldn't be so much of a problem because the bark is so thick here. Just gonna look up at the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, watching the end of the cheesy horror. Oh yeah, the the horror movie. Yes, they killed the mantis. And Kathy Wapple, did Paul survive? Oh, that's the yeah, that's the question. Did Paul Drake survive? Because how else is Perry Mason gonna solve crimes and misdemeanors without Paul Drake sneaking around, smoking lots of cigarettes? doing the Paul Drake thing and there we go on his base all set like get some of these things out of my way which means as those dry I'm gonna get some of my weathering powders out of the way as well because they're just kind of taking up space here move some of this stuff now it's we're gonna move on to we want to do the oils here. Oil time. And yes, these are my own that I made out of. Let's just find our right here. Oil paints and white slash mineral spirits. Oh, so Sky King finally gets your oils. I know. Well, hey, you asked about weathering powders. You got weathering powders, and now you're going to get your oils. There is no precise formula as far as how much of this and the oils go to make this. Because colors like thalo green, thalo blue, alizarin crimson, you need 
less of this than this or the regular paint the other ones like say cadmiums and the the raw sand you're going to need more of that mineral spirits white spirits to make this uh wait, waiting seven hours yeah because we are uh, seven hours 19 seconds into this all right so let's get our base out of the way here <laughs> so there we go we got ourselves a nice little base all set for this here it's gonna get this thing closed now palette wise too it's pretty darn simple yeah that's a piece of cardboard remember this parchment paper we've been painting on for oh many hours here it's the same thing i just glued it to that that's all i did i'm gonna move this stuff out of the way once more because it is all in the way and this is what we're looking to get here. Well, obviously lots of different browns and that sort of thing. Now we also have we also have some oil brushes here that we can play with. And this is what originally gave me the idea for doing my own oil paint. So we'll we'll play with some of those too. We'll, we'll throw it all out on the palette. I just got to get these in the positions where they belong. And I'm also going to blue tack Mr. Palette here to the surface. Just give me a give me a second here. Uh, let's see. How do you judge the balance on the mixing? Is right. It's if you can get it into these jars, you got it mixed right. That means it's thin enough. If you can't shove it into these jars, you've got to oh keep going. Uh, let's see. Oh, I remember what, how many of the song unit videos does the Patreon have? There's the Baratheon Wardens here. Where's my Wardens? There's the Baratheon Wardens. That's... Ah, they're somewhere around here. Where are they? I feel them. There we go. So there's one of them. Alright. There's also the Mountains Men in Oil. Number two. There's also the Halberds. Number three. There is the Night's Watch Ranger Hunters. And there's these guys. The Rainbow Cloaks of the Warrior Sun. So there's another one right there. And there's going to be more on the way. There's going to be actually another unit of the horses here. That's also going to be a series.